Hey guys, welcome to Ryan's Running Reviews. Today we have an interesting video because we're taking a look at six different Saucony running shoes. We're gonna rank them, compare them, and I'll let you guys know what my favorites are. Let's run with it. Before we get started, I do want to say these shoes were provided to me by Roadrunner Sports. However, I didn't have a chance to preview this video and this final synopsis is my own. I'd also like to say please leave a like on the video and consider subscribing. Here we go. Saucony has three different kinds of foams in the midsoles of the shoes we're taking a look at today. The first one's going to be Power Run, which is your more traditional EVA-based midsole. It's going to be a little more firmer and I think what most people are familiar with. Then we have Power Run Plus, a TPU foam, which is much lighter and bouncier than the EVA Power Run. And then on top of all of that, we have the Power Run PB, which looks similar to the Power Run Plus because it has a little beaded setup where it's all fused together and creates a really nice texture. But Power Run PB is Saucony's lightest and bounciest foam. So essentially you get progressively lighter and bouncier as you kind of shift up their scale. Next, we're gonna rank stack height. Coming in at number one with the largest stack height went up four millimeters this year and is now just under the legal limit of 40 millimeters. It's a Saucony Pro 3 coming in at 39 and a half millimeters in the heel. Number two is a stability running shoe. It's a Saucony Tempest with 36 and a half millimeters. Number three, at just a half a millimeter less, is the Saucony Speed 3 with 36 millimeters. Fourth place, it's a tie between two shoes with 35 millimeters of stack height and heel. It's the Ride 15 and the Guide 15. And coming in last, to my surprise, is the Triumph 19 with 32 and a half millimeters of stack height. Now all the shoes we're taking a look at today do have an eight millimeter drop. Next, we're gonna rank the shoes from the heaviest to the lightest. I'm actually quite impressed with Saucony. Four of the shoes are under nine ounces, and even their heaviest version is just a touch over 10 ounces, which I don't think is bad at all. They have a more simplistic upper. It's usually pretty refined down, and the tongue is also pretty minimal, and they don't have that much padding in the ankle and Achilles area. So if this works well for me. I love this setup. You get a nice breathable upper, some minimal amount of padding, not too much, not too little, and I think that's why you see a pretty low weight across the board. And now the part we've all been waiting for. I'm gonna rank these shoes for my least favorite to favorite Saucony running shoe. Now I will say take it with a grain of salt just because I rank it at the bottom of my list doesn't mean it's a bad running shoe and I, I would actually happily recommend any of these here depending on what you're looking for but I'm really happy with Saucony in general and their lineup of shoes. They have typically a more minimal upper, more minimal ankle and Achilles area and a more minimal tongue with a really fun midsole. So for me personally I really like that kind of running shoe so I was really excited to kind of get to try all the different Saucony uh, models if you will and I really didn't have a shoe that fully let me down or a shoe I would not want to run in. So just keep that in mind as we go through this ranking and uh, yeah, let's do this. At number six at the bottom of the list is the Saucony Guide 15. This is their standard daily trainer with some stability mechanisms, mainly this plastic arch here that provides some support on the medial side. You also do get some additional sculpting towards the front of the shoe and along the sides. Your foot's a little bit lower in the midsole and provides a rather stable experience, especially because that power run foam is on the firmer side of things and definitely firm compared to all the rest of the midsoles we're taking a look at today. The other interesting part about the guide is that the insert is made of Power Run Plus, which is that TPU material, all the little beads kind of fused together, the same kind of material we see on the Triumph 19 midsole. Now, in my opinion, this does make the shoe slightly more comfortable, but you bottom it out quite quickly if you're actually running in it. I guess it gives you a little bit more shock absorption, but it's not a true needle mover in my mind. So what I like about the Guide 15, well, the first big thing is the weight. It comes in at 9.5 ounces, which is pretty light for Max Stability Shoe. If you want this much support from some other brands, I think you're looking at probably like the 10 11 ounce mark so very happy with the weight here felt very light on foot for a stability shoe the next big thing was the upper fairly thin breathable kept my foot well contained i just felt very locked in to this platform and on top of all of that or underneath all of that is you have a, a nicely sculpted midsole that really does contain your forefoot with some plastic overlays so you really do feel like you're connected into the shoe with a really sturdy heel counter and it was a very stable experience as far as negatives go, the midsole is definitely on the more firm, more dense side of things. Not as lively or as fun as some of the other midsoles we're going to talk about today. The other big thing too is because this is a max stability shoe, you get a very noticeable medial post that's pretty much what provides the guidance here and keeps your foot from rolling to the inside. Now, I personally prefer more gentle guidance, something that's not as noticeable as a, like a strict medial post. Not to say that's a bad thing, but for my personal running style, I'd rather just have something a little bit more subtle that kind of guides my foot rather than just having kind of a hunk of plastic on the medial side of my foot. That being said, I don't think it's a bad shoe. It's just not the most fun, which is why it ranks at the bottom of the list. And number five is a very similar shoe to the guide. It's the Ride 15. 
As far as positives go, I really like the upper here just like I did on the guide. However, the upper here is gonna be slightly more pared down, mainly because we have less plastic overlays and the engineer mesh, which is a two layered approach, has a wider holes for added breathability. And another small thing, just like the guide, the ride also features a power run plus insert. So similar story, you can bottom it out fairly quickly, but I guess it gives you a little bit more shock protection. So I don't know if it really moves the needle, but I think it's a slightly nice touch. The ride 15 features power run foam, that EVA based material. However, while the midsoles look similar, you get a little bit more volume in the guide, which helps with stability, and it's gonna be a little bit more pared down here in the ride. However, I will say that the ride is gonna be a more stable, neutral experience, mainly because you have some contouring, so your foot sits lower in the midsole, giving you some mini guide rails on both the lateral and medial side, and you have an extremely wide forefoot and heel section. Coming in at number four is the Triumph 19, a very comfortable daily trainer, and I'm very much looking forward to the Triumph 20. The midsole features Power Run Plus, which I think is more closely aligned to Power Run PB than it is to Power Run Foam, mainly because it's so much lighter and softer compared to the Power Run Foam. So that little plus at the end makes a big world of difference, and it's a TPU-based foam like we talked about before, but it has a really nice, well-cushioned experience. I love how much bounce it has. It just feels very plush and pleasant underfoot. And because this is a workhorse daily trainer in my mind, I'm happy to see they gave us a ton of rubber coverage here. Now the downside is it's the heaviest shoe out of all the ones we're taking a look at today, but the upside is it probably has the longest lasting outsole. And while I really enjoyed the midsole here with how soft and plush it was, it does have quite a few kind of quirks that I wanna point out. The first kind of weird thing is the lacing system. You have some elastic laces and I wasn't able to get the best lock down here, mainly because once you feel like you have a good fit, the laces always have a little bit of stretch to give. So I had a little bit of heel lift. I, I didn't love how well the upper contained my foot either. And that was kind of ties into the whole story, pun intended, where the forefoot had a slightly sloppy fit. I didn't love how well it contained my foot. I think they could fix this by maybe doing some contouring or some like, I don't know, just maybe plastic overlays or sink your forefoot just a little bit lower in the midsole so you're kind of contained there. But overall, it just the fit wasn't my favorite. The other thing to keep in mind is this shoe isn't the most stable neutral daily trainer for two reasons. One, you have that really soft midsole, so you kind of get a lot of squish going side to side. Another thing too, it's a very flexible, very bendable shoe, so you're not gonna get a lot of um, rigidity out of this midsole here. And coming in at number three is probably the most popular shoe that Saucony makes. It's the Saucony Endorphin Speed 3. The midsole is still Power Run PB, that P-Backs based material, which is currently Saucony's lightest and bounciest running shoe foam. This year, they gave us a little bit more volume to the midsole and it feels noticeably bouncier, especially in the midfoot to heel region. It's also more stable, mainly because they increased the width of the heel and gave us some stability wings on the lateral and medial side as part of that full length nylon plate. The Speed 3 is just fun to run in. That light and bouncy Power Run PB foam paired with the Speed Roll rocker geometry has a nice flow to it. I think works really well with those faster tempo workouts and maybe even race day if you really wanted to. Now, I will say, even though they did add the stability wings and kind of made the heel slightly more wide, it's not like a true stable experience. It's more stable compared to last year, but it's still a relatively unstable shoe in my mind. As far as the negatives go, the heel counter is definitely more aggressive. They added this plastic piece to the back, made it a little bit more rigid, and that creates an issue with the Achilles if you're not wearing the right socks. So if you wear true running socks with a little bit of extra padding back there, you won't have it, it becomes a non-issue. However, if you wear more minimal, thinner socks, uh, you will get some rubbing in the back of your Achilles. So just something to keep in mind. They also have elastic laces, which you know aren't my favorite. I didn't think the lockdown was bad. You definitely have plenty of room here. It feels very nice. Um, it just, uh, elastic laces, just aren't my thing, so I'm gonna complain about it. And then the last thing I'll say is they did pare down the rubber, they made it thinner compared to the previous version, so we'll see how that holds up on durability. I think they did this to save weight, money, who knows, but they did decrease the thickness of the rubber compared to the Speed 2. And coming in at number two, this might shock some people, is the Saucony Pro 3. Now, you're like, Ryan, that means the Tempest is number one. Yes, we'll get to that, but let's talk about the Pro 3 first. The midsole features a three-fourths length carbon fiber plate, which is incredibly stiff and much more aggressive compared to the Speed 3's nylon plate, which has a lot more flex to it. The midsole still features Power Run PB, just like the Speed 3. However, we get about four more millimeters of stack height here. And when you pair that with a carbon fiber plate, it provides a much more energetic and snappier ride. I really enjoyed the ride of this midsole. And it's a rather stable experience too for a super shoe. It's not as soft as some of those other top tier racing shoes, um, but I really loved the amount of bounce here. And it was just incredibly fun to, uh, to run in, especially because of how light this shoe is coming in, I believe at the 7.2 ounce mark. 
The upper is incredibly thin and breathable. You have these large mesh holes and then these tiny strands that run across them, creating a very supportive and open experience. I really loved how breathable it was, kept my foot well contained. It is a more narrow fit compared to the Speed 3, um, but I didn't feel uh, too restricted or anything like that. I thought the toe box had actually plenty of room uh, and I was quite happy with the lockdown and fit. There are a couple of cutouts in the middle and in the forefoot. You can see that carbon fiber plate that runs through. And as far as rubber coverage, it's actually quite good, especially in the forefoot section. It has more comprehensive rubber coverage than the Speed 3, which is quite funny because the Speed 3 is a daily trainer and this is more your race day or marathon shoe. As far as downsides go, and I'm kind of nitpicking here, you do have that aggressive heel counter, so make sure you wear the right kind of socks. And the tongue is kind of strange because you have these three massive holes, which I think are supposed to represent the three holes in the Sockney logo. But I didn't love having the laces directly on my foot, depending on how it's all, all oriented. Um, so I don't know if that's a design fail or if they really think it helps or whatever it is, but I wish they have just maybe a more consistent and more traditional tongue. And coming in at number one is a shoe that probably surprises a lot of people. It's the Saucony Tempest. Now you're probably wondering, Ryan, why did you pick a stability shoe for your number one spot when you just went over all these light, fun, and bouncy running shoes? Well, I think this shoe fits a very unique space. It's something I've been waiting for for forever, and there's nothing else like it. It's a stability shoe that's rather versatile. It's incredibly light and features a super foam. The Tempest weighs 8.9 ounces, which is pretty surprising because typically you don't see stability shoes go below nine ounces. So big surprise here. However, the interesting part comes with the midsole. We get a dual density setup, which isn't surprising. However, when one of those foams is the company's lightest and bounciest foam in a stability shoe, you kind of take notice. You get a Power Run PB foam, Saucony's lightest and bounciest, kind of through the core of the shoe, and then a stability frame with Power Run foam. So that same foam we saw on the guide in the ride, that EV based foam which is more firm and it's the frame that kind of runs from the forefoot up along the base of the heel kind of gives you a clip of stability and then you get a medial post of power run foam now this frame and that post on the medial side didn't feel super intrusive it felt very natural as I was running not as hard as we saw on the guide with that plastic medial posting and it just feels a need that I haven't seen in the stability shoe kind of category so if I want to go for uh, you know, a longer run or if I'm worried my form might just start to break down I want a little bit extra guidance I think this works well. It's light, it's fun to run in, and gives you stability when you need it. I was really happy with the upper as well, mainly because it's very thin and breathable and supportive. You get plastic overlays to give it some structure on both the lateral and the medial side of the toe box. I thought it fit true to size and the padding in the back of the shoe kind of fit with the Saucony theme of not being too plush and not being too minimal. I thought it would work, I walked the line fairly well. They also did not skimp out on the outsole. You get some rather thick, comprehensive rubber coverage, which is a nice touch. I thought the grip worked well, and there's a very minimal amount of exposed foam for a shoe this light. My only kind of gripes with the shoe is the tongue is a little bit too minimal for my mind. Uh, you have some padding, kind of like two layers of engineer mesh folded on top of each other for the top of the tongue. But as you get towards the bottom half, it's just a thin layer of engineer mesh. And I, I wish they would go with a slightly more traditional tongue, or something a little bit uh, more well padded, maybe something we see with like the ride um, or the guide. I think that walks the line fairly well. But here it's basically just one piece, like a very thin piece of fabric. So it, when you try to get a good lockdown, you do notice a little bit of lace pressure. And I want maybe just a slightly thicker tongue. And I don't think that would really kind of hurt on the weight end too much. So here is my final ranking. It goes Tempest, Pro 3, Speed 3, Triumph 19, Ride 15, and then Guide 15. So let me know in the comments what you think. Did I get it wrong? Did I get it right? How would you do this order? Let me know what you think.